here is a traveling salesman problem, one that could simply be solved on paper very easily, trying to determine what's the uh, most cost-effective or shortest route connecting five different locations. But this is nevertheless the kind of problem that can mess up an engine like solver. The, the problem is that the relationship between the variables that you're trying to change and the objective function, the performance, uh, value you're trying to modify and minimize, it's not simply a linear relationship. There's a lot of discontinuity uh, associated with the actual decision variables and that objective. Now, this approach that I'm showing uses five variables. All they are specifying is the sequence of each of the five cities being visited. So, in this cell, we're saying that the first city that's going to be visited on this route is city number three. And there it is in the visual. The second one being visited is city number five. All right, there you go. So we're going from three to five and to the other cities in sequence. That's obviously not a very good solution if we're trying to minimize cost or minimize distance, but it's a start. A start that's probably going to mislead solver, but we're not going to use solver here. We're going to use risk optimizer because it's better uh, adept at solving these discontinuous types of problems for us. Now, if I look at the model definition, again, pretty simple. We're just trying to minimize something. In this case, it's total cost or total distance. It happens to be stored in cell P12. We're just trying to minimize the value. There's no randomness. There's no noise thrown into the problem, so we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. This is just a deterministic problem. All the numbers are set. All we need to do is figure out what the right ordering of things is, and for that reason, I'm using the order method. Recall that there are six different methods available to Risk Optimizer. The one that makes the most sense in this particular case is the order method. All I want are these five numbers reordered so that we're minimizing this number here. Now these numbers are linked to distances between these points through some calculations in here, but I don't have to worry about that because of the way that Risk Optimizer runs. I want to specify further how or for what reasons I want the optimization to stop. Well, the terminology for looking at any individual solution in Risk Optimizer is a simulation. Again, even though I'm not using any random numbers, every solution examined in Risk Optimizer is called a simulation. Now, if I only want to look at the first 100 solutions found by Risk Optimizer, then I can say, all right, run this until we have seen a total of 100 different solutions. If I don't want that, I want to use a different criteria perhaps, and this is the one I like. Uh, I might say, let's take a look at the last 50 solutions you've seen and see if any of them have improved upon the best solution we saw, say, 50 uh, solutions prior by more than 2%. And if they haven't, then we're not seeing changes taking place. We maybe have arrived at the optimal solution. All right, I'm hitting OK. And I'm going to let Risk Optimizer run here. So again, this uh, triangle is the mechanism that will allow me to manually start the search process in Risk Optimizer. Let's see how it does for us. You'll notice at the bottom here, I have a little progress screen. And it shows me that it's gone through 12 problems so far. I already see in my visual that I've probably found the best route. And here it continues to examine things, and now it's giving me an option of what kind of output I want. I can take a look at the optimization summary, the log of all simulations. All these are options for me. Let's see what I get with these two, two documents. Here you see I have a new workbook, two worksheets. One gives me the optimization summary, which essentially is telling me this is what I was trying to do. This is the uh, original value of the objective function. This is the final value. Okay, less cost, right? Shorter distance. And it also outlines the values of the decision variables. Here we're looking at all the solutions examined 
as well as the uh, performance of each solution. I believe that the uh, best solution that we encountered was something like 38.6, and there it is. I guess after looking at 18 different solutions, it finally uh, uncovered the one that gave us the minimum cost. But all these additional solutions were examined until we got to 50 solutions afterwards. And again, the stopping criteria was saying, look at the, the last few solutions. Has it improved upon the uh, solution before those 50 were being examined? And at this point, solution 69, no, that uh, no improvements have been found. So the stopping criteria kicks in and the optimization stops. So it's a nice way to stop things if you don't want to be sitting at your desk just waiting for uh, eyeballing a good stopping point manually. I can also use macros to essentially execute the risk optimizer run behind the scenes. I have a little button here that does that for me. If I hit it, and we'll notice it's got, if I go to properties on this, it's got a macro assigned to it called run it. If I activate the button, it will in turn activate risk optimizer and set up a stopping condition. And if the stopping condition is met, it stops the search. And I've asked specifically not to have any reports run. I could have changed that. But let's take a look at the code briefly and see what exactly is going on in the background here. The first macro that we see, the first subroutine we see is something called run it. It's calling another subroutine called specify stop first and then it has some code that specifically works with risk optimizer. Now none of this is going to work unless you actually go into tools and say under references I'm going to be speaking the language of risk optimizer in VBA. That is, you have to click on Palisades Risk Optimizer 5.5 in this case in order for Visual Basic, the, the developer, to understand what you're talking about. It basically is giving it a dictionary. Having done that, though, you can use these terms like Risk Optimizer dot optimize. And that simply starts the optimization process. Additional optional code here says, all right, make sure to use the uh, close it subroutine upon the stopping of your search. And this, in this case, specifies whether you want reports to be written out to other worksheets. Here I'm saying no, I don't want those to be written out. You can always change that though. And which solution to keep? I want to keep the best solution found and not the original. But again, I can change that as well. What is special here is this uh, stopping condition specification. Here again I'm using the, the progress stopping condition where I'm saying look at a certain number of uh, most recently examined solutions and see if we've seen a, a bit of improvement. Here the improvement is 2% and I'm looking not at the last 50 but the, the last 30 solutions in this case and saying okay have I actually improved upon the solution I saw 30 solutions ago uh, in these last 30 solutions. And if the answer is no, we've seen no improvement, then the search will stop. It's that simple. We can actually specify other uh, stopping conditions if we wanted to in code, and they would become active within Risk Optimizer. In fact, if we go to Risk Optimizer at this point and look at what it's working off of under settings, you'll see that this information had changed. We were earlier looking at uh, 50 solutions being examined for this particular progress rule. Now it's changed to 30, and the code did that. We'll talk more about code later, particularly how code can also be run within the, the macro option of Risk Optimizer.